Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm happy to bring you the 39th episode of Mixed Media, The Paper Wishes Way. Today, I have a really fun collection from our friends at Stamperia, the Sir Vagabond and Lady Vagabond collections that we've shown before in webisodes were so popular. Well, now we have Sir Vagabond in Japan. So this collection takes that really cool steampunk style to Japan with some very cool papers and motifs. So we have Sir Vagabond 6x6 pattern papers. We have two gorgeous sheets of rice paper and a collection of chipboard die cuts that coordinate. I've got a couple of card projects with a few simple mixed media techniques to show and some demos as well. As you can see, we have a lot to explore today and I'm so glad that you're here. Come play with us. Let's take a closer look at today's collection. So if you are like me and you love to travel and maybe you haven't had much of a chance to do that lately, well, this is one way we can kind of explore, but it has to be with our imagination. So not only are we going to Japan, but we're also going back in time. So let's take a look at these papers and I think you'll see what I mean. So this set has 10 sheets of double-sided six by six pattern papers. You'll have some all over designs and some focal elements. Plus you will also have 69 cut out embellishments too. And those are generally at the back of the set. You can see them here and then also toward the front. Now you'll notice that this has a really beautiful steampunk style, which is unique to Stamperia. So for example, lots of ships, lots of cogs and gears. You can see them in the dragon here. Very much an old fashioned Victorian era travel motif. Now you may remember from our previous Sir Vagabond and Lady Vagabond webisodes, those two were in London. And so now I guess they've, they've traveled somewhat eastward, maybe on one of these ships. So here's Lady Vagabond and the ship that she took maybe, and then also Sir Vagabond as well. Now, along with our pattern papers, we have two rice paper designs. So there's the Japan Lantern. Let me show this one to you. Really beautiful all over design here with also some elements that you can kind of use separately. So this is the Japan Lantern, and we also have the tree which is a beautiful arching tree here with some floral accents. You've got some text on here as well as some faux spattering, really beautiful. Now we'll talk a bit more about rice paper in the webisode and I'll show you how to use it as a background on your cards. Then last but not least, we have our die cut pack. So as usual, I've emptied out that die cut package and put them onto some cardstock so that you can see how many you get and how beautiful they are. Now there are 37 chipboard die cuts in the set. They work beautifully as card focals and can be used on the card inside too, of course. So here is Lady Vagabond, Sir Vagabond, that gorgeous dragon, lots of other elements and motifs on here too. So that's one sheet to show you. And then also like a pagoda, you've got some tags on here as well. If you do tag art, by the way, or scrapbook pages, these are really a perfect size and a nice sturdy weight on here too. So everything is designed to coordinate perfectly so it's easy to put a card together. And in fact, I have a card that is partially put together and I thought we could just kind of play with some collage elements and see how easily everything coordinates and works together. Now I'm using hot off the presses five by six and a half inch pre-scored white card blanks. This is my go-to size of card and this is um, kind of generally what I'm using for pretty much all of my webisode projects. Now, of course, the pattern paper is six inches, so that's going to give me a little bit of extra border space here at the top and the bottom. So I've just taken this beautiful pattern paper design, I inked the top and bottom edges and glued it to the card front. Super simple to do, and I've also got this nice border element on here. So I have done some inking around the outside edges and that is using the smoked paprika ink pad from Hunky Dory. And it gives some instant dimension, super simple to do too. I'll grab just a little scrap of this pattern paper 
All you need to do is just gently run that ink pad along the edge of your pattern paper. And you can see it's going to create a really nice kind of border and area of definition on there. Then I can glue it to my card front. So I did the top and bottom, glued the paper to my card front, and then trimmed around the outside edge with some excess of that pattern design, and then inked the two long sides on here too. So I've got some color, I've got some texture, and of course I've got that beautiful collage. Now to build a collage on top of this, really easy to do with our chipboard elements. So I've pulled a couple in a variety of shapes. And this is one of the kind of design principles of creating a collage is to work with some differing shapes. So that's going to create some visual interest. So I have one of these tags, which is a rectangle. So you can see I have a fan shape and then I have a really beautiful curve on this teacup. So I've got some variety in here, straight lines and curves. And then what I can do is just start building my collage. So I'm going to pop down my first element, the largest one, that's going to be my anchor or my base. Now, if you're like me and you don't read Japanese, well, you might be wondering how I can make sure I'm, I'm placing this correctly. Well, this is a tag and it's got a little hole up at the top. So that's my, that's my hint on there. So I would place this down and then I'm going to go to the second largest element, which is the fan. And I'm going to position this slightly overlapping. So this is going to give me a little bit more variety on here too, but it's also helping to create a grouping of elements. So sometimes when people create a collage, they think they have to have things sort of separated on visually, but actually to have things overlapping is going to create some really nice balance. Then I'll take my last element here, so the third one, and overlap that on top. And you can kind of play with how much overlapping you want to do. But as you can see, I've created a really nice cluster here. Now I'm sticking with the rule of uneven numbers for my chipboard pieces. So you've probably heard that before to choose one, three, five, and seven, so on. The, an odd number of elements to create some visual space and balance. Okay, of course I want to have a message of some sort. So I've got one of the um, cutouts from the collection and I can just pop this down here. And again, I can kind of play with where I want it to go. Also overlapping, but maybe off to one side. Now I do also want a little bit of texture on here. So I'm gonna use some jute twine and I've tied this in a bow and then I can just place this down. I don't need to worry about threading it through that loop. This will lay flatter and um, be easier to secure down if I just tie it in a bow and glue it down. If you're wondering about how to glue that down, the Cosmic Shimmer Acrylic Glue with that really nice precision tip makes it very, very easy. So that's my hint on that. Now I can also leave this as is, but I could add in maybe um, some sequins or some sort of um, pearl embellishments if I want to, you don't have to. I could also add in some of my favorites, dazzles. <laughs> so these are the everyday greetings dazzles. And as you can see, lots of great messages on there. So I could even just, let's see, pull off this hello. And just place this down, maybe let's say right down here. I hope I'm getting this evenly on here, working upside down and backwards. Okay, and then place that on here and I've got my card design ready to go. So as you can see, it's quick, it's easy to do, and when everything is coordinated for you, it really does take the guesswork out of mixing and matching. Now, of course, you can also add in some other techniques as well. So let's take a look at a simple shaped card. This card is using the nested arches cutting die to give us a shaped effect. So with the nested arches, as you can see, you have a series of arch shapes all you need to do is place one onto your folded card blank and die cut. So let's take a look at this. I'll move aside my card. We'll take another look at that in a minute. And I'll put down my folded scored white card. So the fold is going along the edge here. I'm going to keep this folded while I do my die cutting. And I'll just 
grab one of these arch shapes. And for this, I use the largest one, but of course you could create smaller cards too. Now, when I position this down, I'm going to make sure that this edge of the die is slightly extending past the fold of my card front. Then I'm going to secure it down with a little bit of hunky dory low tack tape and run it through my die cutting machine. So this can easily just tear right off and I'll use some small pieces just to secure this down so it doesn't move around when I'm doing my die cutting. And then simply send that through my die cutting machine. And when I've done that, then I will have a shaped card that looks like this. And then what I can do is simply cover the front of my card with whatever pattern paper I'm working with. So this was that beautiful design. What I would do in this case, simply use stick glue to apply some adhesive onto the front of the card and then position this down, flip it over, and then trim around the outside edge. So you can see it's actually just the perfect size for that six by six pattern paper. Really, really easy to do and a great way to get a fun effect. So you can see I've covered my card front with that really exquisite paper and I inked the edges pretty heavily using the Midas metallic pigment ink in gold. And this just coordinates so beautifully with those pattern papers. Then I have one of the cutouts from the book here. That's my focal element, that beautiful fish. And I layered it with some of the chipboard pieces. So the flower here, as well as these two circular elements. And then I've got my message down here at the bottom. Now along the edge is a bit of jute twine. I've really been using a lot of jute lately and I just love how it adds some subtle fiber and texture to my designs without a whole lot of bulk or weight. Then for the card inside, I have more of that pattern paper, plus a few layered chipboard elements here, these two circular embellishments and then another flower. And then I have my chipboard sentiment piece here. So we've got a touch of gold here with the inked edges, but I have another card that has a little bit more of a bold effect. And this is using fab foil. So let's take a look at this. I've got my foiled edges going around the outside of my pattern paper. Maybe if I tilt that, you can see the shine on here. A really great way to add texture, super easy to do, and it really is a fun mixed media technique. So let me show you how easy this one is to do. I'll just use a little scrap of white cardstock here, and I need my glue stick, and I need some of my Wow Fab Foil. And as I think I've mentioned before, I use these foil sheets until they're pretty much bald. You can really get a lot of use out of these. And of course, there's a lot in each one of the packages. They come in lots of different colors, but I'm using the gold one here. So it's gold on one side, and it's this kind of dull silver on the other side. So here's the process, super simple to do. I'm just going to take some of that glue stick and I'm going to apply it pretty heavily along the edge here of my cardstock. And once that glue is on there, I'm just going to place down my foil. Really make sure that that makes contact with that adhesive. Kind of rub that down and Make sure that you've got foil all over on here, okay? Then all you need to do is let this set aside to dry, and when you uh, are ready, then you can pull that off and you will have a foiled edge. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry while we look at the rest of the card layout. So after I edged the pattern paper, I layered these chipboard elements here with some jute twine. And then I glued the whole piece onto the card front. So the twine is actually secured at the back of the pattern paper. There are some chipboard pieces here and here, and then also this really lovely little cat uh, popped up with some foam tape down at the bottom. I have a Hello Dazzle. This is from the Tiny Words and Phrases uh, Dazzle collection. And of course that being in the gold coordinates nicely with the gold edging. Then for the card inside, I have more beautiful pattern paper with some gold edging on here, plus another collage of chipboard elements, another little cat on there, 
and a sentiment from the We're Together uh, Dazzles collection, which is really another nice way to tie in with that gold foiling. Okay, I'm gonna bring back in my gold over here, and I don't know that the glue's totally dry, but we can pull this off, and you can see that you're going to get a really cool kind of shabby chic effect. Now, the longer you leave it on, then the more of that foiling you will have on here. But I really like having that kind of uh, vintage distressed look. I think it works beautifully for this pattern paper collection too. It's a little touch of shine and a bit of dimension on there as well. Okay, now I have another card to show you. And this one will include some gold foiling, but it will be on rice paper. I'm going to tilt this card a little bit so that you can see how the light catches some of that gold foiling. It's right here, and I've got another little bit down here as well. This gorgeous background design is the tree rice paper. So I've got it trimmed down just a bit to fit onto the card front. And then I added some splattering with watery dye ink. And I've also added some splattering with liquid glue and the foiling. Now there are a couple of tricks involved here, so let's kind of break this process down. Now the first thing to know about rice paper is that it's lightweight and fibrous. And I kind of think of it as a cross between tissue paper and mulberry paper. So you can cut this with scissors, but not with a sliding paper trimmer because the blade will jam up in this really soft paper. You can tear the rice paper if you make it wet first, because making it wet will break down those fibers and make it really easy to tear in a perfectly guided line or area. But of course, by splattering a watery medium on there, you're also breaking down the fibers. So all this to mean that before you do any paper trimmering or splattering or anything with a wet medium, you want to first add some stability to the rice paper and you can do that really easily by gluing it to some white cardstock. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. I've got a piece of just plain white cardstock here, and I'll take this torn piece of rice paper. I mean, just look how beautiful that is. All I need to do is grab a little bit of white glue, and I'm using the Cosmic Shimmer glue. I've got a regular paintbrush, and I'm just going to make a bit of a watery wash here. And what I'll do is just gently paint this onto my cardstock. Now you might be wondering if I shouldn't put the glue on the rice paper. And although it's not as lightweight as like a tissue paper, it still is pretty lightweight. And with my luck, I know what I do is get this all gluey and then have it sticking to itself. So instead I'm gonna put the glue onto my surface and then start from the center and just kind of burnish the paper down. There we go. Now you can see I've got some edges lifting on here and then all I need to do is just come back with my brush and a little bit more of that slightly diluted white glue and just tack that down. You don't need to go all over the top of this. It's not like a decoupage paper in that regard. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. And then there we go. We've got our rice paper all glued down. And all I need to do now is be sure to put my brush into some water and then just let this dry. Now, before I add foiling on here, I do want to make sure that this is completely dry. So. I do have a piece that is already dry so that we can get right to the fun part of this. Okay, so here this is all glued down, dry and ready to go. So again, I'm going to be using some of the Cosmic Acrylic Glue and I'm going to also use my Distress Splatter Brush for this. So what I want to do is have lots of things on hand ready to go. First of all, it's gonna be my gold um, fab foil and I've got a couple of pieces trimmed down so that I can just pop those down on there really easily so I've got a couple of those let's see here's the other one and then I also want to have something heavy that I can place down on top of this so that I can let that glue dry and everything is really nicely secured 
So I either use a stack of books or magazines. I also use my die cutting plates because those are nice and heavy and flat. I'm just gonna dip my brush into this slightly diluted glue, kind of dip my brush into some water too, and then just splatter this on here. Just like I would if I was splattering on ink or paint or any other medium. Okay, so splatter that on there and then quickly put on my foil. I'm gonna smooth this down as before, making sure to make a lot of contact there. Pop this piece down on here as well. And then I'm going to put something nice and heavy on top. And again, just need to let that dry. So I'm gonna set that to one side. And of course, I've got a piece that has been drying for a while. So then what we can do is pull off my foil and we'll see how we go. And here we are. So you can see that gold foiling on there. Now I did let this dry for quite a while, so then this way I'm able to create a really nice spattered foiled effect on here. Now, after this has dried and I'm ready to go, what I can then do is add some of my, um, my ink spattering on here. And I'm using the French Navy. This is a dye-based ink. This is from Hunky Dory. Just get a bit of this onto my um, craft mat. Again, coming back in with my Distress Splatter Brush. I'm gonna make this a little bit wet. Just kind of mix this up on here and splatter. Now, the rice paper has some kind of splatter designs on it already, so this is really just accenting that. Splatter this on here. And then once again, just need to let that dry and I'm ready to put it to use on my card. Okay, so while this is drying, let's take a look at our card design. Now here I've inked around the edges of this using my Midas Gold ink pad, added some jute twine and a dazzle sentiment from the card inside and outside collection. Then for my card inside, I have more pattern papers plus a piece of white cardstock with the Lantern's rice paper. I finished it with a die cut from the paper pack and another Dazzle Sentiment, again from the card inside and outside collection. I really hope you've enjoyed this trip through time and space with Sir Vagabond's Adventures in Japan. A big thank you to all the lovely folks at Stamperia and Antonis for these gorgeous designs. And a big thank you to you for joining me today. We're really glad that you're here and we're happy you're part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For the money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com.